verification of inverse square law using GM counting system. If you have a point source with an initial intensity I dot, then we will be able to see that uh, the intensity falls as I is proportional to 1 by R squared. This is basically called as the inverse square law. Just to refresh your memory about the GM counter, this is the schematic representation of the GM counter. Uh, the highlighted part is basically called as the GM tube and the remaining part highlighted in red is called as GM counting system. So the, in our lab, this is the GM counting system which we use and uh, right now what is being displayed is that we are setting the time for which GM counter will be collecting data, uh, which is 60 seconds. And this is the GM tube. You can see where the GM tube window is. And this is the tray to keep the radioactive source. Now, every GM counter will have a characteristic curve which is represented in this particular diagram. Out here, this part, which is basically the midway through the plateau length, is going to be corresponding to a voltage, which is going to be called as the operating voltage. So in the GM counter system which we are using, the operating voltage is set here, which you will be able to see as 450 volts. Now the measurements to be taken. Uh, one of the important measurements which you have to do is basically the R, which is going to be called as the distance. This I am taking from this point up to the top of the uh, radioactive source. And this R value is keeping on, is kept on changing by keeping the tray at various slots. The slots you can see it here. This is the data which I have collected, where R is the distance to various slots which are shown here, and the corresponding counts as R increases and R decreases are shown here. Okay. Now, the important thing is we have to make a correction for the distance measurement. In an ideal case, this D which you have measured is the distance from the radioactive source, the place where the ionization takes place in the GM tube. But in reality, the R which you are measuring is the distance from an arbitrary point on the stand to the top of the source, as I have demonstrated in the diagram earlier. So to find the correction, what we do is, we basically plot a graph of rate the R value versus the 1 divided by square root of intensity. If you look carefully and you plot the best fitting line here, uh, you will see that the line intersect in the negative y direction and this distance that is from the origin to the point where the intersection inter intercept happens is going to be called as R0. Hence, we have to correct the distance and find the true distance D as R plus R0. Now, we are going to plot natural logarithm of the intensity versus natural logarithm of capital D, the distance, corrected distance. And when you do that, you will see that you will get a straight line, which is the best fit line, which will have a negative slope. So your experiment is basically to find out what is the slope of this particular curve. These are some of the questions which you have to find, think about. First one, what should be the slope of the previous graph if the inverse square law is valid? What is the slope that you got 
another interesting question for you to think about is instead of plotting natural logarithms to prove the inverse square law could i have plotted natural logarithm of intensity versus natural logarithm of t this capital t is basically the uh, un the corrected distance and small r is basically the uncorrected distance the next question you should ask is we had been plotting natural logarithm instead of natural logarithm if we had plotted bayesian logarithm uh, what would have happened to the slope another question which you should ponder about is whether this r not the correction which we correction into the distance which we calculated could it be positive can you explain why the next question which i usually ask is if a if a teacher asks you to repeat one count rate shown by the gm counter would you have got the same value as before if you don't get the same value what justification would you give should you not measure the background radiation for every distance in our case if you notice the data we have measured the background radiation only once why is it so this is basically the explanation for the experiment now i leave with you the actual data your job is to basically fill all these tabular columns and then plot log i versus log t where the corrected data is there here you can see the background radiation which i have taken for the same interval of time uh, as the actual observations were carried out and that count comes out to be equal to 19 and the operating voltage of gm counter in our case is equal to 450 volts so with that i'll stop the explanation